All right, I'm gonna try a rock to point video. Let's see, I've been uh, quite busy this week and last week. And I'm trying not to do these videos at the end of the day, but uh, it seems like that's the only way I can do these. I would rather do them a little earlier. But, for some reason, well, there's, there's various reasons. First of all, it's really, really hot in the shop and I'd rather not shoot a video with the possibility of the camera cutting off because it's too hot and there's other things I could be doing and I am doing when it's really really hot that are not as frustrating as flint napping yeah so that's what I do but the number of videos goes down this is a, a flint from Europe. Did I mention that? It's got chalk on the outside. So this is actual flint. Flint forms within chalk. Chert forms within limestone. That's the difference. Okay? In case you didn't know. Now, they call all of this stuff from Europe flint. I don't know why. But they do. And it's supposedly everything from... The U.S. is all chert and not flint. I don't know why, but that's the way it is in, in some circles. So I'm going to call all of this flint, even though some of it is chert. I got this from Angelo. This looks like it formed within limestone, but I don't know. Maybe not. There's various pieces I'm going to nap and do rock the point videos, but for now, I'm going to try this one. So far, this flint feels like excellent quality flint. Yes, excellent quality stuff. Very nice. So, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to beat on it randomly. And uh, with the intent of making mistakes on purpose, because I don't want to be taking forever. Yeah, when I do it fast, there will be mistakes. Yep. So I'm going to do it fast. So indirectly, on purpose, I'm going to make mistakes. I might, I might not be attacking this in the most advantageous way oh well okay there we go oh they got an inclusion that I did not did not see that from the other side it's hidden hidden treasure yeah, it's not visible from the other side either. Well, I suppose if I had napped it, maybe it goes all the way through. We shall see. I don't know. Yeah, it naps very well. I'm going to try to maximize it for the biface and not try to get nice flakes off. I'm not going to try to preserve nice flakes for other projects from this particular piece. If I get one that's good, it's happenstance. Yep. It's not because I planned it. Those little nodule, those little knobs on the sides, on the outside. They're kind of annoying, but it makes for a good video. You can see how well I mess this up. <laughs> what is this? 
shape we have here. It's making me delay. It's making me think about it. There we go. Yeah, it naps very well. Yep, yep, yep. Is it translucent flint? Kind of, sort of. Yeah. If you can get large nodules of this, it'll be very nice. But you can tell it's snap in half type flint. I have to be very exceedingly careful with it. Yeah. It will snap in half. With my style of napping, this stuff will snap in half easily. What is my style? Other than spastic and stupid, it is opportunistic. All right. I don't like to prepare too much, although I have been trying to prepare lately and slowing it down just so I can prepare stuff but it's starting to wear on my nerves doing it that way yep and newsflash you don't have to prepare everything perfectly in order to flint nap nope and that's one of the variables and how they used to do it back in the day. You don't know how they used to do it. They might have just said, heck, I'm not gonna go with the, the rules. I'm just gonna haphazard it today. And maybe I'll get lucky. And then on some days, yeah, I'll take, I'll take it really slow and careful. I'll spend a week on this one point. Because, uh, we just had a harvest and we got lots of food. So I can spend a week on one point. I don't have to go looking for food every day. And I'm gonna make a, you know, back in the day, they might say, I'm gonna make a knife and it's gonna take me a week, but I don't care. And then on some days, I need to make six knives in one day and they all gonna look crappy, but I need to get them done. Cause we need to skin a bunch of animals. Or something to that effect. You don't know how they used to do it because you don't know the circumstances. One guy could be making beautiful points and the ugliest points in the tribe, depending on how much time he's got. Yeah. You don't know. Just think about what happens in life. And that's pretty much what happens back in the day. So I can make super thin points and I can take a long time and I can do it with rationality and careful attention to details and strategies and all that. And some days I'll just go to town and not care about too much. Same guy, different results. Yep. Okay. There you go. It does respond to hard hits. I'm glad because it's this is needing some hard hits to remove turtlebacks and lumps. I'm hitting above center line in some cases, hoping to scoop out stuff expediently. Yep, it's not the best strategy in many cases. You want to solve problems or looking for me to show you how to solve problems? Sometimes I don't solve them in the best ways. Just so you know. And sometimes they don't get solved. 
Some things that get solved by accident. By luck. Lucky, lucky. Yep. It is a thing. And I don't take care of my tools like I should. Sometimes I do. Same guy. Different results. Which one I like better, the steel or the aluminum? So I'm trying both. What I would like is some long flakes. I can't seem to get the long flakes. It's probably because it's very narrow. And I had to hit extremely hard on this to get those turtle backs off. This is going to be an issue. Because yeah, it's going to be weak. It'll snap across that if, it, if I don't eliminate it. It's going to snap right across that area. And yeah, I'm going to get the cheater tool out. I'm probably going to have to use the cheater tool a lot. Yeah, although it, it responded quite well to the cheater tool. Did you see it or did you miss it? You missed it twice? Man. You got to start making your sandwiches ahead of time. Yeah, you didn't know I was going to post a video. I got people asking me to post videos all week. When are you going to do it? When? Soon, man. Now that you asked, I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> yeah, all these people asking. I don't, want, I don't feel like doing it no more. No. Okay. Does that happen? Do I do that? Does it happen with me that I don't like doing it? If I get asked to do it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. I'll either go, yeah, or no. It's not because of what they ask. It's do I have the opportunity or the mindset or the, the energy? Sometimes I didn't get enough sleep. And what happens when I don't get enough sleep? I end up breaking the point and wasting the material. Yeah. Waste. This actually flakes extremely well. It reminds me of uh, Georgetown Black. There's a type of Georgetown that looks black like this. Georgetown Flint from Texas. It's kind of rare. Yeah, and that's very similar to this. And it is a flint, because a Georgetown flint forms within chalk. Now the Georgetown black is snap in half type flint, for sure. So it's, it's uh, not that easy to deal with. Snap in half shirts and flints are really really frustrating I gotta watch it with this because it could snap and have at any point at any point in time although you know it's spoiling me because it it allows me to run long flakes it's very consistent as long as there's no inconsistencies yeah <laughs> yeah thank you captain obvious so I'm using aluminum mainly on this because I don't want to crush the edges. And it's also a bigger tool. It uh, theoretically will remove larger flakes, although not always. Depends on the surface you're hitting, the platforms and all that stuff. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty details. Even if you know them, you won't be able to nap anyway, so what are you worried about? 
when you're new you can know all the details and you still can't nap you can understand everything but not do anything yeah sometimes it might be better not to know that way you don't get as frustrated because it looks so easy and you want to do it easily If it looks so easy, it should be easy. Yeah, that's what the mind will tell you instinctively. Because you're trying to do monkey see, monkey do. So, monkey see easy, monkey do easy. But nope, it won't let you. Because not enough time, not enough practice. Not enough doing the same thing over and over again until you get different results. Yeah. I was looking at doing content for my other channels. All week. I got maybe a few done for my philosophy channel. But don't look over there because it's ugly. <laughs> I really need to do a better setup with the lighting. and But that's just so frustrating. Yeah, I'd rather just wing it and make doo-doo with what I got. Just shoot some films and that's it. Shoot some videos. No big deal. Just like I do on this channel. It's not a big deal. But I, I got this down to a habit, so... I just need to turn the camera on and start filming. I got everything set up for this type of situation. For my other channels, I gotta do more work. But I'm not gonna do more work. I'm just gonna wing it. Yep. So it's a biface stage. It's a good a good resting point or a good reevaluation point. A reevaluation point to look at the point to see what kind of point I'm going to make. Get my point. Alright. Alright. What to do? It just feels dense. It feels heavy. Heavier than American flint. This is heavier. Yep. Nice. A mistake. The uh, there's no more chalk in the middle. There's a little bit right there, and that's it. Looks like it might be consistent all the way through now. So what do I do with it? Do I know a, of a European style that's awesome and fantastically great and stupendous? Not off the top of my head. Uh, but I need to make something. Woodsy style knife, maybe. But I think this is British, English flint. Woodsy was not British. No. In fact, there's no. There's just a few. Maybe there's like one living relative that has a genetic link to Woodsy. Something like that. Very rare DNA. Today, anyway. Okay. I was just looking at... Uh, I was just looking at something... The other day, sheep herder. And the... Uh, the shepherd's rods that they carry, modern sheep herders in uh, Syria or somewhere like that, in the Middle East. And lo and behold, his sheep herder stick or sheep herder rod looks just like Utsi's staff or what they're thinking is the preliminary bow. 
But no, it's a it's a sheep herder's or a goat herder's. Doesn't matter which one. Rod. Yeah, it's not a bow. I don't think it's a bow. I never th thought it was a bow. Anyone who knows how to make bows will look at it and say mm, it's not really a bow. The grain's all wrong. It's all weird. Cut through the back rings and stuff. You know, you usually just peel the bark off and that's the back of your bow. If you've made bows. But his bow has got grain and goes in weird ways. So it's a, it's a rod of some sort. It's a herder's rod. Shepherd's rod. Yeah. But no. Archaeologists will stick by. It's a preliminary bow. Look, look at it. It looks like a bow. Okay, whatever you say. You're the expertises with the expertise. <laughs> so what am I doing now? I'm just regularizing. If you're, if you don't know, I have a, a tendency to try to regularize it during the process. Somewhere during the process, I'll regularize it. Everything. Regularize it. Everything. I will regularize and call it the next stage after I finish the regularization. Regularization entails removing mass from the ends, making the edges straighter, and making the, you know, flaking less crackly and crunchy. Makes everything more regular. Yeah, funny how that works. It's funny why I call it regularization when I make everything more regular. I got the fan going. I hope it's not disturbing anybody. If it is, oh well. It was over 106 degrees in here. A little bit earlier. Yep. Good old summertime. Oh joy. In the desert. On the edge of the Chihuahuan Desert. Yeah. All right. Did I get the name of the desert correct? I don't even know. I don't remember. I don't remember for sure. The memory comes up, but whether it's correct or not, I don't have any idea. My brain needs a fact checker. Yep. Needs it bad. Okay. This 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 step is kind of vital that I don't mess it up. This is so nice. This snaps with flakes that are as predictable as obsidian. But it naps like flint. High grade raw flint. But with predictability similar to obsidian. So it's the best of both worlds. This stuff, you can make beautiful stuff with it, I think. Yeah. This will allow you to do nice things. Look at that. Yeah, it's cooperative. It's one of the few stones that maybe wants to be an arrowhead. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it does want to be one. 
but it's not going to be one. It's going to be a knife. Yep. Oh, yes. If I can get it to be thin where I want it to be thin. It started out kind of wonky, so it's hard to get it thin down to where it's straight and thin without losing too much off the edges. See, that's the hard part. If it's wonky to start with, you tend to lose a lot off the edges to make it unwonky. It's the opposite of what I want. And I'm taking the chance of hitting the base at this stage because it could snap right in half. Dang it. It wants me to hit it hard. Or it's gonna or it's gonna not flake with long flakes. It doesn't need to be hit that hard. I just don't want to take a risk. This is the only piece like this I have from Angelo. I have a similar one, but this one's got even worse issues as far as inclusions. It probably naps in the same way, but it's got more issues with inclusions. So this is all I got as far as good stuff. And again, even if it's a really good flint, you can still make mistakes on it. Especially if you're trying to hold back a little bit. Yeah, see I took a risk hitting that as hard as I did. Because it can produce incipient cracks, not only a snap and half situation, but it can produce incipient cracks if it survives. Luckily, it didn't do either one. Yeah. And it is luck. Because I'm not too sure exactly why sometimes it produces incipient cracks and sometimes it doesn't with the same types of hits. I don't know exactly what's going on. I use a coarse abrader and a, a fine abrader, depending on how much material I want to take off. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Just like uh, any other material, you use a coarse abrader to remove a lot of material, and a fine abrader to remove a little bit of material. But it's a, it's a little more complicated than that when it comes to flint napping. Because... You also have to take into consideration the smoothness of the surface. It does work a little bit better with a smoother surface than a rough, jaggedy, striking surface. That's a weird lighting. Anyway. So there is subtle subtlety in choosing which one to use if you want to be persnickety about it. I'm opportunistic, so I'll just use one or the other and go, I don't know, let's try something else. Let's try it this way. Let's do a lot of grinding, and then let's not do a lot of grinding. Let's just work it back and forth in di different ways and see what happens. Why? Because I haven't worked it before. If I've worked it many times, there's a there comes a point where it just becomes a. Hold on. There comes a point where it's just routine and it's over and over again. Oh, it's this flint again. I know what the, what works really well. That kind of thing. Or I know I know what worked last time, the last twenty times. So I just do it again. It's a routine. Change it up a little bit. 
break a few with changes. Uh, it it does that. Look at that. Even though it's beautiful flint, it'll do that. Dang it, with a perfect platform and everything. Oh, okay. <coughs> Gosh, that, that, that is so highly annoying. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable how annoying that is. So now I gotta, I've got to worry about it doing that, taking a bite out of the edge for no reason. Yeah. After it's been cooperating so well for so long, still will do that. I'm trying to thin it down. You can't thin it if it's going to be removing a lot of the edge. Your width to thickness ratio gets messed up. You can't be removing a lot of the edge if you want to get it thin. It has to be small striking areas with long flakes that don't bite into the edge. And the piece has got to be thin. In order to make it really thin, you got to thin down a thin piece. Come on. It's going to make me take another bite out of the edge. Yeah. Gonna make me do it. I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, do another regularization pass. And if there's lumps that I need to take out, I'll take them out. But for now, that looks thin enough. Okay. What is the ratio? Europeans, you're gonna get millimeters. Let's just say right there, it's 40. Right there, where? Let's see. Does the light cooperate? See how it's 40 right there? I'm going to measure. It's 8. 8 by 40 is easy. 5 to 1. Right here in this area. So it should be pretty much the same everywhere. But it's easy if I just do a nice round number. So I stopped at 40. And then luckily it, it was 8. 8 millimeters thick there. Right. If it wasn't, I'd go a little bit up further down. So I couldn't, I, so I could divide it without making a mistake on video. Yeah, I've been known to do that. Okay. Yeah, let's do the, let's do the preparation and the dusting off and the uh, sweeping to the side, a bunch of flakes before we start the pressure flaking. Adjust the lighting slightly. All right, ready? Get comfortable. Stretch your back just a little bit. I don't know. I'm just going to examine it for a minute here. What have I done with this tip? It's a big mistake. But you know what? I was planning on mistakes. So it's a controlled mistake. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Where am I pushing on this? All you new guys want me to go up close and so you can see exactly how I'm pushing on the edge. But you're not going to get it. No, nope. because then I, I go all over the place and you won't see it anyway. 
I move around all over the place. It's best. Uh, one of you uh, whiz kids told told me that uh, YouTube allows you to zoom in anyway. Even if I'm far away like this, you can still zoom in. So I don't have to zoom in. Yeah. So you help me to help you by zooming in yourself. That way you're helping me help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't worry, I'll do another silent video where you won't hear me talking. Don't worry. When is he gonna do another one where he don't talk no, uh, about anything? <laughs> Can't wait for that one. It's been too long. Yeah. How long has it been? A few days? A week? I don't post videos for three or four days and people are already going through withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. I'm going to make fun of you guys. Because you're my most loyal fans and most loyal subscribers. You're rock solid. I can make fun of you and you still come and watch. Yep. Rock solid. A very loyal, very awesome core of subscribers. Yes, yes, yes. I am very lucky in that respect. I got great subscribers. So I can talk smack about you. No big deal. No hard feelings. Now what did I do? I just reduced the width a little bit by doing that but I wanted to beef up the edge so I can do some pressure flaking on this because if you don't beef up the edge you get some premature flakeration where flakes start coming off before you have a chance to really put some pressure on the edge and it messes it all up yeah See the tip is gonna have to, I'm gonna have to lose some length off the tip, but I'm not gonna do it yet because I might have a mishap somewhere where if I take too much off of one side and the other side gets a big old bite taken out, what am I gonna do? So I'll just I'll leave some in here, leave some room for just in case. Alright. And this is relatively sharp because I was using it for something else. I don't know if it was the last video. Oh yeah. On some of these other points. Now see this, it's European flint, right? But these nap differently. This this one here naps differently than this one. These, oops, can't do that very often. These two are very, very similar. Although the darker flint is better. In my opinion, it, it's napping better than the lighter one. Yeah, it's highly cooperative. The darker stuff. Okay. So yeah, just opportunistic flaking for now. Getting rid of some of the bad spots as far as waviness or lumpiness the, there's some inclusions in this one here I don't know what that is in there but it's not consistent it's got some kind of chalk in there mess up your edge So yeah, if you're new to the game, you probably want to want to rewind the first part to see how I got a bi face out of that lumpy moon rock.
All right. Yeah, you'll be done rewinding and rewatching in you know, a few minutes, and you want another whole video. When's the next whole video? It's been it's been a day. You slept, right? You should have recovered already. <laughs> That's what you might say. Should have recovered. Why are you not recovering? Yeah. I'm a little bit busy. Okay? Okay? Let's see. I want to do I want to continue with the pressure? I do in a way, but in a way I know I don't. I'd rather be doing a lot of indirect percussion. That way I don't wear out my pressure flaking methods and my pressure flaking muscles. You know, I gotta pace myself. And that, that includes the tools too. I don't wanna wear down my tools and then have to make new ones when I get down to making my auction stuff. I don't like that. I think one of the things I don't like, one of my pet peeves that I don't like, is I gotta do a hundred things before I can do one thing. Yeah. I know it's one of those days when I have to do a hundred things before I can do one thing. That I'm planning on doing. I gotta do one thing, hundred unexpected little things before I can do the one expected thing. I mean, one of those days. Luckily, it's not been that bad. It's just a lot to do. Normal stuff, not unexpected. Not one of those days where everything seems to be going wrong or weirdly. It doesn't even have to be going wrong. If it just starts going weird, that's enough to make it a bad day. So, I mean, I don't have to be symmetrical. This does not have to be symmetrical in order to be useful, but I'm going to make it symmetrical. It was 40 wide millimeters, right? I lost some. See that? Now it's the widest part is 40, where before it was probably like 43. And uh, it's still 8 millimeters thick. So it's still 5 to 1, but it's getting, uh, the width to thickness ratio is being messed up a little bit. So if I want to go thinner, I'm going to have to thin down the thin piece again. Uh, but I need to look at the symmetry. I'm going to make it symmetrical. Three minutes. Yeah, I'll just do the rest with most of the rest with pressure. Now I might zone out. I might zone out because any little mishap and it. I won't be able to do what I want with the symmetry. Come on. I don't know. I don't know if I did that right. Working on symmetry is a little bit different than working on other aspects. Because you're not looking necessarily at what flakes best 
you're looking at where does the outline need to be regardless of where it's flaking the best or what areas to possibly avoid because it won't flake well you don't care about that stuff you're just looking at the edge the outline so it's a little bit different type of flint napping and then you go back to the regular scheduled programming come on And then back to the trimming for the symmetry. Some of you might say, well, I guess all of my flint napping looks like to be the trimming for the symmetry in that case. Yeah, well, I guess you can start out that way, but you're going to have to eventually change it up to where you're doing thinning or you're doing edge work to make it sharp or you're doing symmetry work or you're removing turtle backs. They're all different types of flint napping. Sure, there's another one in there somewhere. Okay, so I'm just trimming it to death, basically, to try to see slowly if it's gaining any, if I'm gaining any uh, benefit. Okay, so at this stage I can look to see where I, I'm able to thin it down some more. I can see some spots where I'm able to. The problem with it is that uh, if I take too many risks, because it's risky with it when it's thin, uh, I'll break it. If I take too many risks, it, the odds catch up to you. They do. You can't play the you can't roll the dice hoping to not get the certain numbers to pop up because eventually they will. You know, you roll dice enough, you're gonna get the numbers you don't want to get. So you flint nap and hit it enough, you're gonna get the break you don't want. Yeah, chances go up with the number of hits that you're going to get the break that you don't want. It's going to have snappyola pudding. You're going to be having snappyola pudding for dessert. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go back to indirect percussion just a little bit. Why I choose certain size tools, it's not scientific, it's just opportunistic. And with a little bit of, I'm used to this tool already, I'm just going to go with it type of thing. When I probably should be using a smaller tool for the smaller type of flakes that I want to do. We'll see. I might go to the smaller one. Hold on. 
There's some weird stuff going on right there. I don't know what it is. But it is. It is weird stuff right there. But it's not too bad. Yeah, make sure you've got a soft floor or plenty of cushion down there and don't nap on a concrete floor unless you've got towels and cloths and stuff on the floor or whatever to dampen the blow because you will drop it in case you don't know. And yes, there are guys that new that watch the channel. I just had an email from a few this week. Brand new. Been doing it two weeks or less. That one was scary. I could feel it remove a big flake. And sometimes when that happens, that means it removed a flake that was too big. Now, the real ones didn't have perfectly straight edges in many cases. So that's one less thing a new, new guy has to worry about is getting the edges perfectly straight. But it seems like that's what they want to do. They want to thin down thin pieces and make perfectly straight edges. First thing. Yeah. I don't know. This is this particular piece. I don't know if it's uh, if I've been using my eyes too much today, but I can't seem to figure out exactly where I'm going to hit. I'm just guessing up most of the time here. See the lumps, but the the edges are just not correct in many cases because it's the edge is kind of still kind of lumpy. I did regularize it with pressure, but it's still a little bit lumpy. It's probably because it started out wonky. All right, not too many more thinning flakes. Not too many more. <sighs> Just uh, the this edge is not good. I gotta make it better for the thinning flakes. Come on. send this back overseas I want it to look good or at least a little bit good okay I can't be doing that see if I put pressure and I miss and hit that whoo not too much pressure this way even though it's tempting to put pressure on it and if you know what happens if is if I don't use pressure assist I got to hit a little bit harder and it's a subtle thing. Sometimes I forget. And then I end up with a step fracture because I didn't hit hard enough. There it is. That's what I want. Yeah, I don't need too much more. That was that was it. That was just the lump that I was bugging me. It's still it's still kind of thick in some areas. No big deal, no big deal. It's, it's highly dicey, but it's no big deal. Everything is a risk in flint napping. Everything is highly dicey. No big deal. I 
That's what I gotta tell myself. Okay. The glove is starting to get in the way. All right. Here we go. No. If it doesn't seat, it's not going to flake. The flaker has to seat well. I could thin that tip down quite a bit more instead of leaving it thick. I could thin it down a lot more. Take more risks. Grinds down pretty easy this flint, which is good. Don't have to spend too much time grinding it, but sometimes it grinds it too much. And I go, dang, I ground it too much. But it seems like it. Ouch, that's. Uh, it's too crackly. Don't be doing the crackly stuff at this stage. Yeah, you want nice clean flakes. No cracklies. Yeah, clean. Little bit of a crackly. That's because the edge is, is very thin right there too. Shouldn't be hitting that. It's already more narrow than I wanted. All right, we're just gonna finish up with pressure. Yeah. Unfortunately, I gotta grind it a lot. I'm gonna lose some width here again. But oh well. That's what you gotta do if you want it to be thin. You gotta lose some width. Well, most of us anyway. Some of you guys can do it without losing width. I wanna see it though. How to thin without losing much width. And don't just put a link to one of my videos. No, because I want to see it. <laughs> Some of you might say, well, why, why am I going to put a link to one of your videos? Just lame. They're all lame. Yeah, my kids would agree with you. Yeah, your videos are all part of a grift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Change my name to Grift. Grift Crafty, not Jack. Hey, right. yeah. Oh, someone wanted to hear some of the dogs barking, actually. I'm not going to name any names, but yeah, I was surprised to hear that sometimes they miss the barking. I would have never guessed it. Oh, 
What was I looking at today? I was driving around today, lots of errands, and I was looking at cars. I'm going, I remember the day when no one had rims on their cars. They all had hubcaps on the tires. <clears throat> none of this, none of this fancy rims stuff. Now I'm looking around, I could not see a single car with hubcaps today. All day. I was looking to see, is there one with hubcaps? Because my van is old enough to have hubcaps. I took them off because I don't like them, but I'm looking around, I'm going, dang it, there's nothing. Hubcaps are a thing of the past. That's it. No more. Everyone's got the fancy rims now. Everybody. I remember when hubcaps were the thing. Yeah. I remember looking for hubcaps when I first got married. I would ask my wife, how, how are those up on the shelf there? Okay. How about those? Yeah, good. Good. Instead of picking out curtains, you pick out hook caps. Yep. Those days are gone. I just pick out rims. Right? Or they, are, they already come with the rims. You don't need to pick them out. I don't think. Unless you... I haven't bought a brand new car in a long time, so I don't know if you order those. Because normally you just buy a car off the lot. You don't order all that special stuff unless you want to wait, right? I don't even know. How do you buy a car these days? It used to be that you would talk to the salesman and you were like, Damn, if you if it's not a good deal, I'm leaving. And you tell them sometimes, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna stay. Okay, well blah blah blah, we'll do this and that. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's a little bit higher than you want to pay, but we'll work with the interest rate. Okay. And then you go sit down with the interest rate guy. He's a totally different guy with a totally different expression. And he goes, no, you only qualify for this. And you're like, wait, wait, wait. It's a little bit higher than what we wanted to spend, but you said we can work with the interest rate. No, you don't qualify. Well, isn't that, isn't that a thing that shouldn't be done? Giving us high hopes. And now what are we going to do? We're going to walk out? Yeah. At that point, you don't want to walk out. Why? Something I learned recently. It's because of the sunk cost fallacy. Sunk. S-U-N-K. Cost. C-O-S-T. You've already spent all this time looking for the car. You get down to the financing and they pull a fast one on you and they say, no, you don't qualify for lower financing. Because it, that's just the way it works. You can't, you can't work with it. You qualify with what, I mean, you, what you get is what you get. You can't qualify for anything different because of your record, your financial record or credit score, whatever. There's no negotiating that. And you get, well... About to walk out, but I spent all this time. So I'm going to go with the sunk cost fallacy and act irrational and say, okay, we'll pay the higher rate, the interest that we thought we we're going to pay. Because we're just losers with our credit score. Okay, fine. Yeah. I learned later I can always contact a credit specialist and have the credit score improved drastically sometimes it only takes a month or two or maybe at the most three months or something to see some improvement and then you can qualify for a better rate but we didn't know this youngins when we were young credit credit help professional credit help what's that we kind of knew from spam calls we will help you improve your credit blah, blah, blah. you know you would think you think at that age it's so spam calls they don't help you with jack no it's actually a thing I mean they might not be able to help you but many times it can be done so you just walk out and go we're not gonna we're not getting the interest rate we thought we we're just walking out see ya 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Of course, my, my ex-wife never liked to walk out. I've walked out of a few sales meetings. She doesn't like to do that. Or she didn't like to do that. It's one of the things, you know, if you get married, make sure you're compatible on the money side. If you're not, you're into for a lot of you're in for a lot of um, how should I say misery <laughs> yeah yeah some people are more susceptible to the sunk cost fallacy than others me it doesn't matter I don't well it does a little bit but I don't I'm not as sunk cost sensitive as I used to be yeah I'll just cut my losses don't want to lose no more so I'll just stop and how does it relate to flint napping yeah just because you have a lot of time in a, into a point don't think that you have to stick with it or a certain design or whatever just because you have a lot of time into that particular design no need to get all bent out of shape just go with a different design yeah but I put like an hour and a half into getting the notches right and they blew up and now I gotta do something else it's just a misery 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 <laughs> Just get rid of the sunk cost fallacy and you're okay. You're okay. You'll be alright. It's a fallacy to be worried about the costs that you already put into it. Yeah. If you're looking specifically at investments, sometimes it's going to be extremely hard, but you got to cut your losses sometimes. Don't think about how long you've held on to that thing. All the sweating and all the hardship trying to keep it maintained, and now you got to let it go because it's going to be a drain on you. Don't let the sunk cost fallacy rear its ugly head. Just cut your loss. Same with uh, flint napping. All right. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So I didn't measure to start with what it was. This is four and a quarter. Or how many millimeters? 117? No, 107. And it's 35 millimeters and it is seven seven millimeters so it's still five to one luckily it stayed it's it's almost just under five to one I can I can thin it a little bit more but uh, since I don't want to mess up this piece more than it already is or take a chance I'm just gonna leave it yeah, and it's a knife blade. Simple. No notches, no discernible stem, although sometimes they would put notches in the sides or make it a little lumpier so that the wrapping and the glue actually works better. I'll just leave it. And it can also be, of course, a, a little dart point. Yep, Europeans didn't make it little darts and at laddles and at little dart points. Oh, yes. All right, there you go. Now I'm going to go to sleep. And the edge is, is sawtooth. It's not really thinned down a whole lot. It's just jaggedy sharp. Jaggedy sharp. And it's not, per, it's not perfectly straight. See how this curves? But I just went with the flow because I didn't want to mess it up. I already tried to do a lot of 
powerful hits on it and I ended up hitting it too hard right there so that's it no more it's a it's a nice feeling flint too and it started out looking darker than it ended up being. It looks lighter than the original. That's, That's the original color. This is the finish. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's my imagination. But this, the, I remember it being darker. But it's it's the same. Yeah. I just remember it being darker, like a black. But it turns out it's a little bit of a gray. Yeah. Or a lot bit of a gray. Okay, so that's it. It's very nice. I like this material a lot. It does remind me of Georgetown Flint, but it seems to be a little bit better. Uh, just like I was observing on this one. If they feel velvety. It feels velvety and a little bit easier to nap. It's The terminations are, are wonderful. See how it, all the terminations tend to be smooth. There's hardly any cracklings or fingernail type stuff on the terminations it's very smooth which means it's a flexible type of flint very good for making stuff very good it's very nice if you can get a lot of that if you guys over there can get a lot of this of this quality because it's not all the same but if you can get it of this quality yeah I can see where it would be very enjoyable alright there you go.